privilege to have several visitors here today. Uh, some that are from Oregon, the Millers happen to pop in. And of course, a lot of the children's family are here. Elaine, they celebrated Elaine's 90th birthday coming up yesterday as a family. I just, Elaine had eight kids, and out of eight kids,
this message a few months back when I was supposed to come and you all know that I ended up in the hospital with a heart attack again <laughs> now, they're getting very familiar but I didn't get to so I put it away and said I'm going to preach this when I get to part for you because I believe it'll help y'all I want to preach this thought today that God is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you tonight, this morning, there's nothing better than God. Amen. He's the best thing. If you're saved this morning, you have God that lives in you, that's the best thing that's ever happened. Amen. If I didn't get called to preach and go to Colorado and Arkansas, I'd still be here. Say, why would you say that? Because there's a lot of best things that happened to me here. Oh, I've had things happen to me here. Some of the best things in my life happened at this church. I believe a person ought to be loyal and loving to their church. I was here, the first project they had when I was here, Brother Brown is putting blocks on the mission building. That's how long it's been. <laughs> I was saved here at 10 years old at this precious church. God stepped into my life and changed me here at this church. I was... I remember going out in the parking lot in this church and <coughs> seeing a little bold man jump out of the car and this pretty little girl stepped out. I didn't realize I'd still be married to her 46 years later. 
I got married to that woman here at this church. I had our five children were all born and raised in this church. I got two of my boys here this morning. I want you to know that your first day in church was at the altar, laid on the altar, given back to God. This church means a lot to me. The best things of my life happened here at this church. We raised our kids here. We were married here. Me and my wife were married here. Raised my children here. I love this place. <clears throat> Why'd you leave? Because God called me somewhere else. But I still love this place. Amen, preacher. I still love this preacher. You are, he's my pastor, by the way. I don't take kindly to people talking bad about a preacher, you know, especially when he's mine. Amen. Amen. I love him. He means so much to me. You don't, you don't know what it means to hear somebody call you and say, hey, preacher, I'm just thinking about you. I prayed for you. My pastor does that all the time for me. Y'all might not appreciate this, but every one of them stupid rocks up there I put up there. <laughs> <laughs> Not the middle ones, the outside. I had no fingerprints for a long time. You, I'm not bragging. I was just telling you, there's a lot of fun things that happened in this church. The best things of my life happened here. A lot of my kids were saved here. Changed. Could I say this morning that God is the best thing that's ever happened to me and you? He is the best thing that's ever happened to you. God. Our Bible is the very words of God. It's the mind of God. Let me say I'd like to say this this morning I'm not that I'm very intelligent because I'm not but the Bible has only one interpretation for all scripture every verse God has a plan and he knows what those verses mean we might mess it up and figure out something better but God always has it's his plan his book but there are very a few, a whole lot of different applications you can apply to. I want to go to Luke chapter 15. It's one of my favorite chapters. It's a parable. So God told three parables. You understand about parables. They're an earthly story that relates a heavenly uh, meaning. You also understand that parables were not written for the lost. They were written for the saved. And, but here in chapter 15, I've heard it preached so many ways, and I say you can apply it any way you want to, but I'd like to go to the meaning of it today, the very meaning that God established in this chapter. A lot of people call it the chapter of the prodigal, which it is, but if you understand what the word prodigal means, it means one that wastes money. I don't know, maybe it was just me, but I used to always wonder, is it the person that leaves and wastes money? Is, and, and people always preach it, that they were saved and they'd come back to God. But in this chapter, I'll show you that it's not the saved boy that left the home. It's the lost boy that left the home. He could have wasted his money at the house. He could have been a prodigal there. But the Bible calls him the lost son. And so I'd like to just read this parable, these parables and try to be a blessing. Look at chapter 15, verse 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners and to hear him. 
And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eateth with them. Can you imagine what that was just said? And God spent time with me that I could get saved. Do you understand how important that is for a loving God to eat with sinners, to fellowship and to think about sinners and to share the gospel with the sinner? I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad that he stepped out one day and I received Jesus as my personal Savior because he cares for me. In verse number three, the Bible says, He spake a parable unto them, saying, What man of you, uh, having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he find it? And when he had found it, lay it on his shoulders and rejoices. So when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise, or that likewise just means this, in the same way. They were happy their sheep was found. But he said, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine which persons which have no repentance. Could I just ask the Lord to be a blessed help us this morning? Lord, I am grateful. I need you. I need your power. Lord, I want to be a blessing to these people. I don't want to waste their time. God, I'm going to give them something that will encourage them in the Lord and, and live for you and be the right Christian. Oh, I pray that you'd bless in a real way. Help me with my voice, Lord, in Jesus, I pray. Amen. So we see first of all, in verses 1 through 7, you'll see that it's dealing with the lost sheep. Now remember, it's context we're dealing with. We just can't take a verse out of a whole chapter. You've got to read the chapter and figure out what the chapter meant. When we go to verse 8, the Bible says, Either uh, what woman hath ten pieces of silver? If she lose one, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her right neighbors together. Say, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angels, O oh God, over one sinner that were pregnant. Twice, God said, likewise, I'm comparing this lost sheep and this lost going to that going to heaven, to be saved. You say, preacher, I'm excited. You say, I, I, God's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Being saved is one of the greatest, greatest things that's ever happened. In verse 11, we'll see, and he said a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, forgive me a portion of the goods that fall unto me. And he divided up to them that's living. That's important to look at because the boy is going to come back later on realizing he has no more inheritance. Because his father separated it all. His other brother got everything that was left. And his brother had all that he had coming to him. But he wasted it on righteous living. Say, oh, preacher, it's just a back said, No, that's a lost boy that left the home. Didn't care about the things of God. Didn't want to go to church. You say, preacher, I'm just going to let you know something today. I have no idea who's saved to hear it but me. That's the only person I know that's saved is me. I hope you all are, and sometimes I think some of you are, but I just know this. I know I'm saved. When I think about this boy in this chapter, when I think about him leaving his place of protection, his place where people went to church and praised and loved God. 
And he spent everything he had. He wasted it on righteous living. He just lived it up. He was enjoying himself. He was having the time of his life. The Bible says that not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be at want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field to feed the swine. You say, well, preacher, could I just say something to you? Hey, when you get done, when you get to the bottom, when you're at the bottom and you're praying for your children, pray for your children to be saved. You know, I remember, I remember Job prayed for his children, married children, that they weren't sinning. You say, preacher, I even pray now. If some of my kids or some of my grandbabies are now my great-grandbaby ain't saved, I pray God would save them before it's eternally too late. I say to you this morning, he said, he made the statement. He repented. I know repentance is a big word today. Everybody don't like it. But God said, except you repent, you shall like my spirit. Repentance is just the change of the way you think. That results in a way, change of the way you act. When you get saved, you think differently. I'm a lost sinner. And now God spoke to my heart. The Holy Spirit dealt with me, and now I want to change the way I live. Why? Not because of the preacher, but because God moved into your life. We see in them, and, and he said, after he repented, he said, I am no more worthy to be called. Thy son make me as a hired servant. He already realized there was nothing for them except a fine table at the food at the table. He knew where to go back to if he wanted to find help. His dog, Bob Father stayed faithful. Says in verse 24, I'm just going to skip up there. Listen, it says, For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. He was dead. Now he's alive. He was lost. And then he was found. When I think about what God did for me. When I think about this story. I think about this father sitting on the bench. I, I see him sitting on the rock or on the porch. Just waiting for his boy to come home. I see him weeping and crying and praying. God touch my son. Lord bring my son home. I see him as he continues his faithfulness in praying and staying faithful with God. To give that son a place to come home to. I also know this, that our righteousness is filthy rags. When God looks down from heaven, he doesn't see me. He sees that blood that you say about. The blood of his precious son that was covering me. The righteousness of God was placed upon me. He clothed me with his righteousness. I'm going to heaven not because of me, but because my God clothed me with his righteousness, his right living. Boy, you know, preachers get blamed for a lot of things, but I'll, I'll never have to answer for why you didn't do right. I'm going to have enough time, I'm going to have enough hard time figuring out what I did wrong. The Bible says we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of ourselves. I'm not going to be able to tell anybody, my mom, I sure love my mom. 
she's she doesn't understand how wonderful yes she does but what a heritage how many times has God placed the rights of God on, on others others in this church God gives his imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ to those who trust him the word imputed just means he ascribed or he gave his righteousness to another. He imputed. When I got saved, he gave me his righteousness. I get to go to heaven because of it. And then he imparted. Folks, listen, this is important to understand. Because you're saved, <clears throat> then the Holy Spirit imparts his righteousness. What do you mean, Peter? It ain't teaches us how to live godly in Christ Jesus. Impart is teach. Impute is give. He's given us his righteousness. And now he's going to teach us how to live for him. Who gets all the glory? God. Amen. I have to hurry up and so many people tell me they got to go here and go there. I got no place to go. Hey Amen. I'm so far away from home. I can't go home if I want to right now. I'll be done soon. I'd like to do something. I, I, you know me, I, I'm a little crazy. I'm a little different. Y'all know that. But I, I can't hardly show you this without, if I don't really show it to you. I like show and tell. I, I, I don't know a whole lot of people here, but I do know Cal, so I'm going to abuse him this morning. <laughs> and I ask him to come and bring one of his grandkids with him. I've got to illustrate this story to you. I'm telling you, hey, he's too big, Cal. I thought I was getting a little guy. <laughs> I forgot everybody in his family's big. We go back a long way. I'm surprised he's still going to church. <laughs> he taught Sunday school for so many years. Guess who was his only student? That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't recommend that. When I think about this problem of the father, you know, let him be the father, and I get to be the servant. And that's going to be the young boy that's all messed up and terrible and <laughs> falling apart. Got pig manure all over him, and he's not cleaned up. Well, let, me, let me just... I'm trying to help you this morning. This is going to be so good if you just listen. And the Bible says, And the son said unto the father, well, he, verse 20, And he rose and came to the father. But when he was a great way off, the father saw him and had compassion on him and ran on and fell on his neck and kissed him. That's my God. That's my God. That's my God who saw me in my wicked, bad, dirty condition, but fell and loved me. That's my God. And the Bible says, and the son said unto the father, I've sinned. Sounds like salvation, don't it? against heaven and in the sight and no more worthy to call thy son and the father said to the servant come on up here son you stand right there I sure that, that I know it's grandpa but it's dad stay facing me <laughs> don't hit him <laughs> he said listen to what he said bring forth the best robe and put it on him 
That sounds like the righteousness of God placed on the born again child of God. So I'm the servant now, and the master has said, Get me the best robe in the house. I'm thinking to myself, I know where all the robes are. I know where the robe, what closet they're in. I know how many there are. And I know where the best one is. And so as I'm thinking, he said, get the best one. When I think about the word best, I'll give you this definition. It just means the best one. God's the best thing that's ever happened to you. And the servant looks at the master. That's a big job. I got to find the best one. He wants the best one. I could get fired for this if I don't get the best one. So here's the servant. He gets behind the. He gets behind the father. He got the best one. And then he put it on. Amen. Man, that thing fits. It's not supposed to fit. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then he said he gave him the ring. That meant he's got the authority of the family. He put shoes on his feet because he didn't want to look at his bare feet, but he wanted to give him shoes on his feet. There's a whole great line to talk about there. But I want to say something to you. Everywhere he goes, he's getting ready to go to a party. They haven't seen him maybe for years. He couldn't go to the party the way he was. He looked bad. Now he goes into the party and everybody's looking at him. Is that the younger son? What's different about him? Look what he's wearing. He's wearing the father's coat. He's wearing the father's righteousness. The father, he's got the best room. In the house. Yeah. Is your mother out there? Your mother out there? Yeah. Run over there. <laughs> Lori, is that your boy? What is his name anyway? Huh? Todd. Todd. You sure that's his boy? Your boy? Hey, what's different about your boy? Asking your mother. <laughs> What's different about the boy? He's got what? He's wearing the father's coat. I know that's not the father, but he's supposed to be the son. That's pretty cool. Hey, walk next door there to the preacher. Preacher, that you know who that is? Who is that boy? And what's different about him? And what's different about him? He's got that coat on. I have to answer for you so you don't mess me up. <laughs> Could I say something to you, church? When you truly get born again, when you truly get born again and saved, God <laughs> puts his righteousness on you. And everywhere you go, they'll say, I know who that is. But man, there's something different about it. There's something different. And boy, please don't ever tell somebody I have to do this because my preacher said so. I get in trouble with that anyway. But let me just say something to you. You're different. Why? Because you've got the righteousness of God placed on you. And he ain't the only one. Would you like to raise your hand and say I'm saved this morning? Yeah. God's got lots of coats. And you all got one. And everywhere you go, everybody you see, 
Everybody you meet should look at you and say, well, I know him. There sure is something different about him. You know what's different about him? He's got the Father's coat on him. Come on. That's exciting. I'd like to get more exciting, but I'd lose every voice I got. And you know I've got a big one. Well, let's do this one more time. See if your dad can get this. Pull over there to your daddy. You know who he is, sir? You do? He looks, he didn't, he didn't dress like that this morning, did he? No, he the problem is it matches. I was trying to get something a little smaller so it looked like it didn't fit him. But he ruined my whole illustration. But that's not his jacket. That's not his righteousness. That's not his. But he's wearing it pretty good. I'm not worthy to be called his son. But I got his righteousness on me. And my life must be an example of the believer. Why? Because he's the best thing ever happened to me. He is the best thing. I forgot about you, Dad. Come on, Dad. Go find your seat. You'll be all right. I think we got enough. Hey, has God been the best thing that's ever happened to you? I'm serious. This morning, life is so short. There's so many things that are happening. Things are going to change shortly. He said, Preacher, I, I'm looking to see God soon with y'all. I'm going to go up in the Uppertaker, not the Undertaker. But let, let me just say, while I'm here on this earth, while you're here on this earth, if you realize the Father has covered you with his righteousness, and everywhere you go, I know this ain't going to be good. You know, but he seems to like this. But everywhere you go, you ought to show forth Amen. him. Because it's all about him. Amen. There ain't nothing worth talking about more than him. It's all about him. Amen. Brother Williams, I'm, I'm done. Appreciate you letting me.